I've been self-coaching for powerlifting for 26 years now, and I know that a lot of you guys out there are also self-coached, and I thought, you know what? We could sit down and have a conversation about it, and there's probably some things that I could tell you that would help you out in your journey. So let's do that. I think the first thing that people think of when they think of self-coaching is writing a program. You're gonna be the one in charge of your own program, you're gonna write it yourself. Yeah, and that's a huge part of self-coaching. That's probably the part that I've enjoyed the most. I really like to geek out on the training side of things. And if that's you too, you should know that there are a few different ways that you can go about it. If you're self-coached, you're gonna write your training programs, you're gonna do this for a prolonged period of time. There'll be some blocks that you write that are very inspired. You have a clear idea and you wanna bring that idea to life from scratch. And there are other blocks where you just kinda of gotta write it. Maybe nothing truly fundamental is coming to mind. Maybe you've gotta write it when you're tired. You've gotta do all the things that coaches have to do. It's just, you have to do it for yourself. There are different ways, that different tactics that you can take to help you out in this writing process. For one is, especially for those blocks where you maybe don't have a huge amount of inspiration as you sit down to write, take a template. There are lots of templates out there. You'll be able to use your own past training to provide other templates. And I know that we have lots of programs that we've written and we write them in a, in a pretty specific broad way so that we can have a good template to start from. We call them strategies. We give them, give them all names that uh, tell us something about like what goes into the strategy itself. Now for us, we've taken all these and we put them into a library and I would encourage you to do something similar to that. And that way, when you, you know that really what I need right now is a training block that has a little bit lower intensity and a little bit lower specificity, you can grab one of these. And even if you're not feeling like really inspired about what you need to write, that gives you a good baseline to start from. It means that you don't have to remember every little thing every time you sit down to write. And then there will be other blocks where you do kind of have a lot of this inspiration just as you sit down to write. And that's great. You'll want to you know, take advantage of that when you can. It's still sometimes a good idea to, to bounce that off of past programs to make sure that you're not missing something like, oh yeah, it doesn't really work that well when I put my squat and my deadlift days this close together. They need to be separated a little bit more or something along those lines. So having that type of program library can be really beneficial, really crucial to developing a good program. All members of the RTS training lab have access to this, the coaches dashboard, whether you're a self coached or you're coaching other lifters, you can come into the coaches dashboard from the drop down menu. That's from your, your dashboard central. When you get in here, this is the first page you open up to. And if you're coaching other lifters, you can have them show up in the sidebar, or if you just self coach, it will just show up as yourself. And you see the program builder here, we can open that up and there's all kinds of different things we can do. We can start from a blank slate and literally write anything in any way that we can imagine from w whatever. There's no shortage of options. You can add different exercises to each session with different kit options. If you want to slow the tempo down or the stance or the grip or the range of motion, there's all kinds of different exercise modifiers in there. There's all kinds of different exercises in different categories. And you can also even create your own user-defined exercises that you can load into your training. And you can organize them, the loading protocols via RPE or via percentage, whichever you choose. If you don't wanna start from scratch and you don't wanna start from blank, then under the global, this is where there's all the program library. There is a plethora of different programs in here there is a program sifter that will be covered shortly in this video that talks about the different strategies and what they target to do as different strategies have different intentions and different training intentions and different loading protocols. And like, that's why they're called a strategy. And we name them so that we can more easily talk about them. You can copy any one of them you want into your own custom library, and then you can edit them. For example, power cord EC, 
is a bit of a work capacity, high volume, low specificity training strategy that is to help increase the the work capacity and efficiency of the lifter. And that's why we see a lot of mile rep work. There's a lot of hypertrophy involved in this and a lot less specificity, hence the hip belt squat and Bulgarians and Bulgarians and things of that nature. Now, every one of those stock strategies needs to be adjusted to meet you where you're at. If you're writing this training for yourself or somebody else, it does need to be adjusted to meet your needs. For example, I've recently modified this stock strategy, this power cord EC for myself, power cord EC Ross. And there are some key differences. I wanted to bring in some SDE work and not just do the low specificity work. I wanted to have a little bit of blend of retaining some of that skill and some of those types of exercises within the strategy while also doing some of the core mile rep work in the SPEs. So it's adopted and changed to meet me where I'm at and what I believe that I need based on what I've seen in my training history. And what's cool about that is once you get the training modified and ready for you, you can select the lifter and you can come in here and you can load it into your training log depending on which dates you want to deploy it on and you can deploy it and it will load directly into your training calendar come into calendar central it'll be here and you can open the session and you can edit the session and we'll have all those targets for you and then you log the actual training that is transpired but it loads that training that you wrote directly into your training log so that it is more easy and efficient for you in terms of logging your training as you go through your session. A lot more to come. There's some more tools that'll be showcased later on in this video on the program builder, training stress, things of that nature that will benefit you and help you write effective training. I'm going to introduce you into the training lab library. From here, you can look at all the programs that we have available for training lab members, and you can search based on different parameters and find a description box to tell you about each program. You can select the parameters such as stress, low, medium, and high, and the requirement will be met by all the items in this box. You can search for an additional top set benchmark, say by three, and the top box will show you all the items that match requirement one, the second box all requirement two and the third box will show you programs that match both requirements then you can look into the program descriptor and find out all the information about this program so for its mc it'll tell you the top set the benchmarks reps as well as a small description for the sdes and spes into the program library you can look at all the programs available to members of the training lab you can additionally search by other parameters and see all the programs that match each parameter so for instance, by two, these show you all the programs of a top set benchmark of by two. Clear and select all. And from here, you can see all the different programs again. I'm going to go over some of the features for the training lab. One of the cool things that we have offered is introductions of new programs in our program library that's already quite extensive. Every month, a coach will introduce a new program available for training lab members for use for themselves or their athletes. This is available underneath the resource tabs for training lab members. This is what we have so far on top of programs already in the library. You can see this is contrast by Adam. He'll go over the program background, why it came into fruition, and a short description of where the background comes from and the training effects and stimulus. We have a wide array of coaches that all have their own programs. This is John going over his program, Goliaths. This additionally allows you to make informed decisions of when a program might be a good fit for yourself or for your athlete. Having a coach go over the program decisions behind why and what suits an athlete can be important for program making decisions. We have program library offers from Mike, Ross, Peter, Penny, and they'll continue to add on to this library. Each program has a why and a how, and execution instructions along with a video of this background. In the RTS training lab, we recognize the value of going beyond the standard podcast format to provide you with an immersive and exclusive learning experience. Our training lab exclusives are specifically designed to complement the wealth of knowledge shared on our podcasts. 
While our podcasts offer insightful conversations with experts, the Training Lab takes it a step further by recording specialized content, providing you with an in-depth exploration of key topics. You can find them in the feed or simply search for the Training Lab exclusive to get an overview of all the shared videos. What sets our Training Lab apart is its focus on interactivity, because those exclusives are not just about listening, they are also about actively engaging with the Training Lab community as we value your thoughts as a coach and also as a self-coach athlete. But then as you start to write it and you start to iterate on it, going back and looking at past training data, I mean, you guys have heard me say this stuff before and since forever that having a good training log is really critical. Being able to go back and analyze that training log in a meaningful way is really critical. And, you know, I can't not mention the reactive training systems training log, which is free for everybody to use that's designed for this, right? Like you log your training as you go through the blocks, and then you can do block reviews as you come to the end of each block so that when you're in this situation and you're writing your own training, that you can go back and pull out those block reviews and see in a more systematic way, which ones do you respond well to and which ones do you maybe not respond as well to. And keep in mind that for members of a training lab, they have access to premium reports that can help them refine that data even, even more. But regardless, one way or another, pulling out that training log data and using it to make future training decisions is really important. I know it's elevated my own coaching and even my own, the writing of the training that I do for myself. It does both of those things really well. There are patterns that emerge from the training log data that you maybe wouldn't have noticed. Sometimes you're gonna come across things that you definitely did notice. You know, you definitely did notice that the last few blocks when you've done your volume work at 85%, that things have gotten significantly better and that'll be information that you wanna use. But I've definitely had athletes where the, the patterns and trends were less noticeable. I've had athletes whose deadlifts have responded really well to like rows and upper back work which wasn't something that they necessarily thought, it wasn't something that I necessarily thought, but here it is in the data. And when we capitalize on that, it results in more progress for their deadlift. Asking why is definitely an important thing and it's a, a whole other conversation and a thread to be pulled at, but you've got to start with the observation itself. And that starts with keeping a good training log and keeping it in a way that lets you pull that data back out. I wanted to cover how I monitor my athletes' training using, using the coaching dashboard, how I use block reviews, which summarize a block's worth of training, and how I use meta block reviews, which summarize several block reviews. Everything starts at Calendar Central and recording your data. In order to get good data out, you got to put good data in. So being sure to record your training by clicking on the deployed training, hitting edit, and writing down exactly what happened is important. Other things like your body weight and your track score, a measure of fatigue, are other good things to monitor as well. If I wanted to look at my lifters in aggregate, I'll go to the menu up here, click on coaches dashboard and get taken to a screen like this, where I can see how people's lifts are doing in general. If I look here, I can see that this lifter's bench is green. It's gone up since last session. This lifter's bench has gone down since last session because it's in red, but it's this lifter's week one and that's completely normal. If I wanted to dive into this lifter's training a little bit more deeply, I'll go ahead and click on their name and it'll pull me to a screen where I can sort their squat, bench, and deadlift by progress over the past one month, three months, and one year. So if I wanted to, for instance, see what happened during this really good bench session, I can go ahead and click on the session itself, open up the bench, and see exactly what they did. Scrolling down a little bit, I can see their calendar, I can see their body weights that they've entered, and their track scores, which are all really helpful for monitoring their training. I can see their training stress using a 3-day, three, 6-day, three day, and 12-day average. I can also see gains and losses for all of the exercises that are in their block, and I can see notes that they have written or that I have written. Below that are the block reviews and meta block reviews. If you've never made one for that lifter, then you'll have to create one by queuing a report. If I wanted to open up a block review for this lifter, I'd go ahead and click on this icon and it'll pull me to a screen that looks like this, where I can see how their squat, their bench, and their deadlift all trended during the block. Just below that is a section for notes where I can write, for instance, their plan stress, things that I want to remember for the, the other blocks when I'm looking back on this, 
and even their protocol for what exactly they did. It makes it a lot easier to quickly reference things that way. I can also see a table breakdown of all of their lifts and how things trended during the block. Just below that, I can see a chart of the exercises on the left and the reps across the top and which exercises I did for which reps or had them do for which reps. Below that is stress index broken down by the category of knee dominant movements, hip dominant movements, and so on. If I wanted to check to see if the total stress that was actually recorded in their training log matched the plan stress, then I could uncheck the central and peripheral stress and just look at that total stress and go, okay, they actually did way less than what I had planned on them doing, and I can adjust that for next time. If I wanted to look at meta block reviews for a lifter, I'd do the same thing. I'd make a report, and once it's complete, I'd click on the icon and it'll pull me to a screen like this where I can look at all of the blocks that I've decided to include in their analysis. If I wanted to look at an individual block, I could and understand why this block had such a high rate of gain, well, I can click on this icon and it'll take me to that block directly. Scrolling down a little bit further is one of the most important features of the meta block review, the competition lift heat map. This tells you for the competition lift, which areas are hotter or colder. So an area that if you sort by rate of gain has a red or an orange circle, it's going to be an area of a better response. And if it's blue or green, that's going to be an area of a slower response. If you want a little more information, you can go ahead and click on the dot itself and it'll tell you which block used this protocol and other information as well. Just below that, you can see a breakdown of stress index in a different way, where if you ran some blocks that were all very high stress for this lifter and they all did better, that might give you some good information. Just below that is another really helpful part of the meta block review, which summarizes which exercises have been effective for each of the SBD movements. You can sort this again in several different ways by peak E1RM or gain and see that, oh, okay, this lifter has had a tempo squat, a another tempo squat, some back movements, another tempo squat, you know, maybe control is really helpful for this lifter squat because they're all showing up as a higher rate of gain than the competition lift itself. These are just a few ways to use the meta block reviews and block reviews to help understand what your lifter is responding best to. Also keep in mind when you're writing these programs, it's obvious it's something that you'll be thinking about, but the workload needs to be tailored to the level that you're at. So if you tend to have a high work capacity, then you'll have to continue programming it in that way. And then if you have a low work capacity, you'd program lower workloads, obviously. But the tricky thing comes with shifting intensity levels as you go from one block to another. You just completed a lower intensity block that had lots of training volume and you're moving into a higher intensity block. How does that change? Keep in mind that the last time that you did a high intensity block may have been some time ago. You also have hopefully experienced some training effect from the blocks that you just completed. So how does all that play into the training workloads that you want to program in the upcoming block? Well, that's where stress index can come in and be very helpful. It's a very underrated tool, a very underrated variable. It's the way that I tend to think about workload at this point. We do stress index calculations and all this, again, for our training log and, and in the program builder on the RTS site, this all gets built in for users. So you don't have to worry about hand calculating it yourself and doing all those extra intermediate steps. It's presented to you and you know, hey, my bench press needs to be trained at a a 15 stress index on a weekly basis. And so you can manage it for you know, that particular stress level, regardless of the intensity of the block. So that's a really beneficial thing. And it's a really important thing uh, for making sure that the workload gets put at the right level so that you can stack up more successful blocks. The block review process is going to help with this as well, because you'll be able to look back over those blocks and identify Oh, when I push the workload up a little bit, it actually makes the, the results a little bit worse. So maybe that represents some sort of upper limit to, to how much training stress you can handle. And you're able to, over time, pull out that really useful, really individual information 
on how you're responding to your own training and you get closer and closer to that ideal training program. One of the things that I love about the program builder in the training lab is that as I'm writing training, I can start to look at the total stress index, not just for the entire block, but for each individual movement. So knee dominant for squat, hip dominant for deadlift, or any type of hinge, horizontal and vertical pushing, thinking about bench press and overhead press. I can also see horizontal and vertical pull. Now keep in mind that stress index is a measurement of how stressful a program is. The higher the number, the more stress your program has. Now there's a few factors that are involved in stress index. One of the problems with looking at other metrics is that they don't always tell you the whole equation. If you're doing a single at a 10 RPE, well that's certainly more stressful than do, doing something like 10 reps at 50%, but 10 reps at 50% has more volume. So again, it doesn't give us the full picture, whereas stress index actually does that for us because it breaks things down into both central stress and peripheral stress. Central stress basically means the training's heavier. Peripheral stress puts more focus on the structural or hypertrophy adaptations that we need in training. So stress index is a, an important metric that we can use to monitor and analyze our athlete's training. Looking at those individual stress metrics helps me because when I go into the athlete's training log and I write a, or I run a block report, I can then look at those stress metrics and I can see what was the average stress of the program that the athlete actually did versus what I wrote. Because sometimes it's higher. And if it's higher, then I might want to write more training in the upcoming blocks, or sometimes it's less. Maybe I need to kind of cool off on some of the amount of stress, the number of sets and volume that I'm giving the athlete. So this is a really important metric. It updates live as I'm writing, and I find that it is super beneficial for writing training that is truly individualized for athletes. It's also important to note that training is not going to always go according to plan. Pretty much everybody who's been in powerlifting for long enough has experienced some sort of injury or some sort of setback. It happens. You don't have all the answers. I've been self-coaching a long time. I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. So something that has been really instrumental in my own training and my own progress has been really intentionally cultivating a broader network of people that I can ping ideas off of, that I can ask questions to people that see training, you know, in fundamentally similar ways, but not exactly the same as me, that we share a lot of common language with, that we just have some similar ideas, but you know, maybe just come at things from a slightly different angle. So that type of network building has been really important for my own progress. It's something that's difficult to do. It's taken for me a lot of intentional work. It's also something that I understand is not totally available to everybody. Again, for training lab members, they get access to RTS coaches, uh, me included, and a range of other subject matter experts that are really outside of the powerlifting coaching realm, but maybe they have expertise in nutrition or injury management or a range of other specific expertises. So if you're self-coached and you come across any of those issues, that can be really important to have that kind of reach back. Having support available makes it a lot easier to ask for support when you need it. I wanted to introduce the Training Lab Discussion Board. It is a resource for athletes and coaches to ask questions to other athletes and coaches around the world. You can scroll through and see new additions, updates, discussion topics, questions, office hours offered by our community specialists, including nutrition, sports psychology, and biometrics. You can see detailed answers answered by people from around the world with different opinions, histories, and experience that are a value add to any coach and athlete who wants to better their game in powerlifting and our sport. We have specialized options for nutrition, sports psychology, and you can see that we add our program library additions to this as well. Our resources include a lot of videos. Something the RTS Training Lab offers is the ability to hop in on an office hour. An office hour is a dedicated slot of time in which you can jump in on a conversation with a subject matter expert or RTS coach and ask questions about programming, training, 
all matter of subjects or just bounce ideas off of your own training experience as a coach or athlete. This back and forth dialogue is incredibly helpful and invaluable in growing you as a coach and athlete. Being able to collaborate and connect with other athletes and coaches around the world is absolutely invaluable for growing yourself as a coach and student of the powerlifting sport. We have office hours available multiple times per week, either by a subject matter expert or an RTS coach, especially. This can help grow you as an athlete and a coach in ways that you might not have been able to had you not had the ability to connect with another coach or athlete. You can troubleshoot problems and you can see and connect with other people who might have experienced the same problem you have and might offer a solution or a new way of thinking that you might not otherwise have come across. Hope to see you there. Another really important aspect of self-coaching is logging your own training. Sometimes I'll run into people who maybe downplay this, the importance of logging their training, especially for self-coach lifters. They're kind of thinking, well, I did the training. I was there. I know what I did. Well, that's not exactly what the log is for. Logging your training is a lot like saving for retirement. When you need it, it's too late to start it. You've got to save for this in advance. And the more you can kind of put away in the bank and the longer you can build up that savings, the better off you're going to be, the more data that you'll have to pull from when you find that you actually do need it. A good bit of advice that uh, came from one of our coaches, John Garfano, is to treat yourself like a client. And after he said that, I thought, yeah, you know, really, that is something that I've done. I just really wasn't aware of the fact that I was doing it. Like even going as far as to perform check-ins for yourself, whatever process that might look like, whether it's keeping notes in your training log or even like sending yourself an email with kind of a summary for the week, treat yourself like a client. And one way that that's particularly manifested for myself is to write training in the same way, on the same rhythm, uh, even on the same day that I write training for my clients. I'm in the, the correct headspace, an especially useful tool for those of you who are self-coaching, but also coaching other people. So this type of similarity in how you write training can also extend to how you review your own training as well. When I go through and review my athletes' training logs in the coach's dashboard, we've got a list of our athletes you kind of go down the list and you're clicking on each one and monitoring their training logs. Well, my name is in that list as well. So I can click my name and see kind of from the data's perspective, this is how the week went. I can see where that check-in was at and just kind of use the same sorts of processes that I do for clients. Just use that for myself as well. And I think that keeps me honest as a coach too, that uh, if the process is good enough for my clients, then it's good enough for me. And if it's good enough for me, then it's good enough for my clients. It's just as important for the self-coach lifter to do a thorough analysis and, and treat themselves like a lifter. In order to write the best training possible for yourself, you need to be able to do the breakdown and do the block reviews and do the comp breakdowns and look at and analyze all the different data and things of that nature. And that's one of the cool things about the RTS Training Lab community is we get to talk about a lot of those things. And one of those things specifically is Mike shares a block review report. Each time he completes a block, he does a full video recap of the findings of the block, what the intent was, and goes into great detail about the contents of that block and the outcome of that block. Lessons learned, does the same thing when he gets done with a competition, does a competition review. So it's part of his process to show people how he goes through the self-coach process and how he treats himself as though he is one of his own lifters that he's working with. That can be really beneficial and it's really beneficial for us other self-coach lifters to see that process and incorporate some of those learnings into our own processes. And that's where this is really beneficial. And you can see the breakdown. It's available to everybody in the RTS Training Lab Mighty Networks community group, posts the video, gives some bullet point highlights, and then you can also engage and ask questions and get more detailed feedback and clarity from Mike himself if you have any questions from viewing his breakdown and his block reviews. And there's other lifters that post some of their own block reviews as well along the way, and you're invited and welcome to consume that content and see what you can learn and parse out from those learnings that can apply to your own training. All in the pursuit of strength in optimizing the individualization process of writing radically individualized training.
And the last bit of advice I'd like to leave you with is to continue to put effort into growing and expanding your own knowledge base. If you're self-coaching, this is vitally important to your growth. Nobody has it all figured out, and I can guarantee you that what you know now will not be sufficient to continue moving you forward in the long term. You're going to have to continue to grow that. You're going to have to continue to expand it. So putting that effort in now, similar to logging your training, you got to do that work now so that you can reap the benefits of it later. You have to look for things that challenge your biases, look for things that or maybe slightly out of your domain of expertise. I've focused on training for such a long time. I feel like that's where my area of expertise is strongest. But you know, something I haven't focused on that much would be nutrition. So spending some continuing education time on nutrition can be useful. And even like going as far as kind of making a list of the things that are required as powerlifting coach, because you're self-coaching, you, you are the coach. So you have to, you know, Keep an eye on that and develop yourself as a coach. Figure out what those job requirements would be, you know, whether that's learning something about uh, game day coaching, even if you're not doing a ton of it, you're likely to learn something and bring that back into the processes that you have to improve your product a little bit. Maybe it's learning about equipped powerlifting, even if you don't necessarily coach other equipped lifters. Chances are you're going to learn something new and probably learn something useful through the experience. Even going outside of the domain of powerlifting, I know that's been uh, tremendously useful for myself. And anytime that we talk about emerging strategies, you know, keep in mind that that original idea came from outside of powerlifting. So kind of expanding that and coming in contact with lots of different ideas from lots of different places and filtering it always, making sure that it comes back and has to make contact with reality and ultimately improve your bottom line. An exercise that's worth doing and it's a skill that's worth getting good at and it supports and feeds into the rest of these processes that we've talked about throughout this whole video from writing training to logging training to analyzing training to doing your own check-ins and all that stuff that's going to be fed and continually improved you know as you seek and gain new knowledge at rts we always highlight the importance of lifelong learning with the material created and developed for the rts classroom we provide you with all kinds of tools to help you with your strength journey Programming with Emerging Strategies will help you write the most customized and individualized training that helps the lifter get the most out of their training efforts. It consists of eight different modules with videos that you can consume at your own pace. And as part of the purchase of this course, you also get six months free access to the training lab. Personally, before joining RTS as a coach, I took the Emerging Strategies course and out of all the courses I've taken so far, this one was the one that provided the most valuable content to me, as it really encourages you to think about the content that you just learned. Because our goal is not to teach one way of coaching that suits each athlete, that should suit each athlete, but instead to really learn how to individualize training. Besides the programming with Emerging Strategies course, there's also plenty of more courses about coaching skills, about equipped powerlifting if you're interested in that and also if you're interested in uh, knowing more about velocity-based training. We have different kinds of courses and also about nutrition and about how to up your coaching business. Hopefully that is helpful. Hopefully that improves your ability to coach yourself. And just want to say thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.